Hi, in this video I want to cover a topic that uh, I think strikes fear in the hearts of lots of students. Uh, this is section 7 through 9 of chapter 1 in Young and Friedman's University uh, Physics. It's on vectors and vector edi addition. Vectors, I think, you know, strike fear into the heart of some students, but basically they are a magnitude with a direction. So let's say I were to tell you, I'll meet you 10 miles from here. Well, that's not very helpful unless you know what direction I'm going in. Am I going south? Am I going north? Am I going east or am I going west? And so 10 miles is a, a what's called a scalar, uh, S-C-A-L-A-R. It's a scalar. It's just a magnitude. But a vector is when I attach a direction to it. If I say, I'm going to meet you 10 miles further on this trail, or I'm going to, I'm going to meet you 10 miles north of here, or 10 miles east or west or south, or I'm going to meet you... Um, I'm going to go 10 miles per hour, uh, that's a speed, that's a scalar, but if I say I'm going to go 10 miles per hour north, that's a vector. 50 miles per hour is a scalar. 50 miles per hour due north uh, is a vector. We use vectors all the time. It may seem kind of complicated because in math and physics we're talking about it abstractly, but we use vectors all the time. When I'm trying to, uh, when I'm running, I go up, I go down. Uh, I go a certain direction. Those are all vectors that you could draw lines at each point where I turn and add them all together. And where I ended up would be the sum or the addition uh, of all of all of those vectors. We use them. We use them all the time. Uh, and so uh, when when I run, I like the vector to be parallel to me. That means that if the wind is at my back, because I know that if the wind is blowing five miles per hour at my back that's going to add to my speed and it's going to help it be easier. But if the wind is anti-parallel, if it's coming in the opposite direction to me, that's, that's bad on the return because I know it's going to be harder for me to run. I'm going to have to exert more effort to be able to go the same speed if the wind is blowing, blowing toward me. Now you can add, you, you add these distances together and like for example, I, when I run, I run a mile and a half in one direction and a mile and a half back. It's, and it's a windy kind of path and it goes up and it goes down, but because I end up where I started, my displacement is zero. That is, if I add all these vectors together, all the directional changes and curves and everything, if I add it all together on my run, I know that the total displacement is going to be zero uh, because I ended back where I started from. So you're beginning to get a sense of, of vectors. It's really not as complicated as it might seem in a geometry or, or a physics class. Really, it's, it's something we do every day. I turn, you know, go, go two miles this way, then turn right. You know, your next exit, and your GPS we listen to, is basically giving us a bunch of, of vectors, as it were. So, now, you, you, all of this is implying that you can add vectors together. And adding vectors together really is nothing more than putting each step along the way, each increment along the way, each arrow, if you would, in the book, back to back, until you end up uh, wherever you end up. Uh, now, in, if you end up where you started, now you, obviously most times we don't end up where we, we've started. Um, we might for the whole day. The vector displacement of you for your whole day probably is zero because you started at home and you ended at home. But a lot of, you know, when I'm going to work, the total vector displacement is not zero because I go from one place to another. But I've, I've drawn this little diagram here, starting with the dot. I've gone a certain direction one, and a certain direction two, and a certain direction amount and direction three, and a certain amount and direction four. And I've ended up back where I started. So the total displacement is, is zero. Now, if I were to treat this as a scalar rather than a vector, and I was going to simply ask, well, how many miles have I gone? Now, I, I, I'm just making up these numbers. It probably doesn't work. Uh, but let's say I go uh, 10 miles, number one, 5 miles, number two, uh, 15 miles, number three, and three miles, number four. Well, if you add all those together, you know, 10 plus 5, 15 plus 15 is 30, plus 3, 33. So my total displacement is in magnitude is 33 miles, let's say. But my total displacement as a vector is zero because I've ended up back where I've started. So you beginning to get a feel for it. A vector is not just a, a quantity, but it's also a quantity in a certain direction.
So, as I said, the total displacement is zero if I end up where I started with. This is called vector addition. Notice it doesn't work like normal addition. It's not just like adding 10 plus 5 plus 15 plus 3. It's not like that. Because the directions are involved, it's more complicated. It involves a map, as it were. But to add vectors together, you basically just put the vectors, each, each step, each increment, each, each continuous direction, uh, you put the, those arrows end to end and see where they end up. And you can see examples of this in, in Young and Friedman if you're following along. And we call where it ends up the vector sum, or another word for it is the resultant. Basically, what is the result of all this moving around or of all this? It, now, I'm, t I'm talking in terms of distance, but you can also do miles per hour. As I said, you can even do this for electric fields. What direction is the electric field um, headed in? So don't think that it's just distance. It's just easy to talk distance because we're at the beginning of a physics book. Um, now, how do, you, how do you denote? What kind of notation do you use for vectors? Usually, a vector is denoted with a bold-faced symbol with an arrow over it. For example, this would be vector A. Uh, by the way, there was a uh, movie back in the 70s called Airplane, uh, and one of the co-pilots was called uh, Victor, and they said, well, what's the Victor vector? Uh, I'm sorry, what's the vector, Victor? Um, and uh, it was a silly movie. Go watch it on Netflix. But, you know, planes have vectors because they fly, you know, in a certain direction, and actually in three dimensions. You know, you have an X, an X, and a, a Y, and a Z component. Um, and so the, uh, there's a, another movie from back in the 80s, I'm sorry, I'm old, uh, the, the original Star Trek with Khan in it, Star Trek II. And in that, uh, Khan, they're, they're in this kind of a cloud uh, where they can't use their equipment to locate each other. Um, and uh, what uh, the Enterprise realizes is that Khan thinks two-dimensionally. Um, and so uh, Kirk says something like uh, negative 10Z or whatever, Z being go down, and then so Khan's up here on this dimension, but they've gone in a vector, a negative Z director, a ve vector, uh, to get away from him. Okay, I go, go watch Wrath of, of Khan on, on Netflix. Anyway, so a vector is a, a magnitude in a certain uh, direction, and we usually denote that with a, a symbol, it doesn't have to be a capital letter, it can be a small letter, uh, with an arrow over the top of it. Now, it doesn't matter what order you add the vectors together. So, for example, let's say that I'm on this corner and I'm trying to get to Starbucks over on that corner. Well, I can either cross the street here and go down, or I can go down and cross the street. It doesn't matter what order you add the vectors in, you're going to end with the same uh, resultant. Um, so there, that's the commutative property. And it doesn't matter if you group them. If you, do, if you group A and B directions first and then add C, or if you do A and then do B and C. That's called the associative uh, uh, property. You, you can do vector. So these properties apply for vector addition, not just normal uh, addition. Okay, well, let's move on. I want to get through 1.8 and 1.9.2. It hopefully won't take that long. Um, you'll notice that I've already been talking about vectors in two or three dimensions, like a plane uh, has vectors in three dimensions, a, the Starship Enterprise has vectors in, in three di uh, dimensions. The same rules apply, though. You put the vectors end to end and see where they end up. It's just instead of putting them end to end in a piece of paper, uh, you're putting them end to end in three dimensions, say. Um, of course, I've been doing two dimensions. Uh, any but anyway, so you can locate a vector. If you, you know, we use in math these coordinate frames, x, y, z uh, coordinate systems. You can locate a vector in relation to, uh, say, an x and a y component. Uh, so in the, uh, the, the picture I have here, this would be the Y component, and this would be the uh, X component. Uh, so uh, there's some nice relations that you learned in trig, if you've had trig already. Maybe you even learned these in geometry. Uh, but if, if we call this the angle theta, um, and you measure the angle by starting at the X axis and, and moving uh, counterclockwise. So if I have an angle theta, there's a relationship in, uh, among triangles, because see this makes a nice triangle. There's a relationship called the sine of this angle, S-I-N, theta. You can spell it out, but uh, that's the way it's abbreviated. The, uh, the sine is the opposite side, the side opposite the theta, over D, the hypotenuse. 
And so the sine of this angle, and, and mathematicians have figured out what sines of various angles are. These are their, they used to have slide rules, rules and charts uh, for this sort of thing. Now we just put it in our calculator. Uh, but th this, this y height divided by the length of the resultant, or the d vector, um, is going to be the sine of this angle. So if I do a little algebra and shift things around, so sine of theta uh, equals y over d. If I multiply it out, then y equals d times the sine of theta. If you don't, if you don't, you can review that if you want to. Otherwise, just trust me that the length of this side is going to be d, the length of d times the sine of this angle. As far as this length. Uh, this, this x component here, there's another relationship in trigonometry called cosine, abbreviated COS. So the cosine of this angle, which is a given, it's on a chart somewhere, you can look it up, you can put it in your calculator. The sine of this, the cosine of this angle is going to be this x component divided by the resultant of magnitude d. Um, and so again, I do a little algebra. If the cosine of theta equals x over d, then x equals d times the cosine of theta. So you, again, you don't have to understand it, although that's nice. If you understand it, you don't have to remember the formula. You can just derive it every time. But um, basically, the, the, the y component of this vector is going to be d times the sine of theta, and the x component of this vector is going to be d times the cosine of theta. Again, this is not hard even if your blood pressure is beginning to go up. Um, so the x component, basically, is this what I just said. The, the x component of vector d, which we might call dx, dx component, is d times the cosine of theta. And the y component of vector d, which we might call dy, is d times the sine of theta. That's why, uh, because of that chart. Now, of course, you can go the other direction where you have the components and you want to find out what the, the resultant is. Um, so this is straightforward Pythagorean theorem. Um, so a squared, let's say x squared plus y squared equals c squared. Or if a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That, remember the Pythagorean theorem from geometry? And so um, if I take uh, x component and square it uh, and put, I'm sorry, I should have done, um, I, 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 I messed you up here. Let's take the a and the b out in your mind and put a d there. dx squared plus dy squared equals, it's going to give you the magnitude of the resultant. It's simple triangle. I've taken the x side and squared it. I've taken the y side and squared it, taken the square root of that sum, and I'm going to get the magnitude of the d, of the, of the, of the hypotenuse, of the, of the vector. Again, this is basic geometry. Um, now, what if I want to find that angle? Well, what, what, because a vector is at an angle. The, the magnitude of d is not yet the vector. I need to know the, the angle. Well, there's another relationship in trig, you may remember, called the tangent. The tangent of this angle is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Um, and so basically, if I divide the y, the opposite, by the adjacent, the x, uh, that's going to give me the uh, t tangent for angle theta. So I want to go backwards. I want to get what angle theta is. Arc tangent is the inverse tangent. And there's a little thing on your calculator. That's what you're looking at. T tangent, T-A-N, negative 1 it might be, or it might be written arc tan. Uh, but basically, you put in whatever y divided by x is, hit the old button on your calculator, and it'll give you the measure of that angle um, for that uh, for that particular vector. Again, it's hard for me to uh, talk it through uh, without a, a video graphic, but hopefully you can follow that. Um, okay, so that's this is the bulk of it. One nine is about unit vectors, and this is nothing. Uh, this this one nine is barely a thought here. Um, but I, well, let me explain unit vectors. We've left an important building here in this section. We used to add numbers. Remember that? Oh, what a wonderful world where we just added numbers. We're adding something different than just numbers when we get into vectors. We're adding a number in a certain direction. And so when we talk about unit vectors, I know this looks scary, but it's not. I'm basically saying 
that any vector, say d, uh, is the the vector sum of its x component plus its y component plus its d a z component. But this isn't just adding the numbers. This is adding these vectors point by point. What's the i with a little hat over it? The j with a little carrot top on it? And the k with a little hat on it? What are those? Those are just reminders. Uh, they don't really mean anything. Uh, they're just reminders that I'm talking about a certain direction. So in this case, the i says, this stands for the x direction. And the j means, and this is the y direction. And the k means, and this is the z direction. Now you may think to yourself, well, why complicate stuff? Uh, I, I, I'm not fully sure why, but mathematicians tend to be very precise. And so these are called the unit vectors. It just basically is like a note, note to self. The I with the hat over it usually means that we're talking about something going in the x direction. J in the y direction, K in the z direction. By the way, it may not always be that predictable. but um, So it's like a placeholder. It's kind of like a little sticky note. The, the I with the hat on it says a little sticky note that says, remember, this is only going in the x direction. And the J is a little sticky note that says, remember, this is only going in the y direction. And the K with the hat on it kind of means, this is only going in the z direction. So don't let that freak you out. It's really not very important, in my opinion, from a practical standpoint. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a way to describe three components of a vector uh, in space. Of it. What is a vector? It is a magnitude of something going in a certain direction. And uh, remember, this is not a normal addition problem. We're not just adding numbers together. We are adding numbers going in certain directions to each other. A um, couple final de details. I thought I'd add these at the end because that what I've done so far is most important. But going back to a couple details from 1.8. If you are adding up more than one vector with components, so let's say you're adding vector A with three components to vector B with three components. Be sure, oh, this is not hard, don't freak out. Basically just add the x components of each together, add the y components of each together, add the z components of each together, and then uh, cook the final vector uh, in the way you would normally. So um, it's going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. I get take the square root of all that, and that's going to give you the resultant magnitude. Uh, same thing with the, with the angles. Um, you're just going to do x over y and arc tangent. Uh, anyway, getting a little ahead of myself, all I want to say is that it's not that much harder to add up a three-dimensional uh, uh, vector. You just add the x components, add the y components, add the z components. But what's important is not to add the x components to the y components or not to add the z components to the x components. Don't mix the x's and the y's and the z's when you're adding directions together. The x's go together like apples, the y's go together like oranges, and the z's go together like peppers or, or whatever. Finally, a scalar times a vector uh, is easy. That just multiplies the magnitude of the vector by the magnitude of the sc scalar. It's still going in the same direction. It's just you know this plus this in the same direction. So a scalar times a vector, it's a vector. But it's it's not the scalar doesn't mess up the direction at all. The the ma it's just adding a magnitude plus a magnitude, and the ve the direction same stays the same. Well, I know this has been a little complicated, uh, but I hope if you listen to this a couple times, it's not that hard. It may be hard to explain. That's my problem, not your problem. You can get this.